Hello. So I got a request on Twitter recently to recreate something like this. It's kind of stats bomb chart. Um, I'm just going to do the, the pitch in the middle here. I think it would be fairly easy to add the, the kind of line charts left and right. But for the moment, I'm just going to concentrate on the pitch. Can't make it absolutely exactly as it is. You can see they have the kind of individual events within each zone as well as the color coding. So I'm going to make something close. I'm going to use the color coding uh, and instead of the individual dots, I've kind of presented it as a past success percentage and the number of, of events that are in it. So this is what we're going to build now in the next few minutes. The chart really has two components. OK, so this is the raw data. I filter this just for passes. Um, so we're looking at only passes and in various different zones. And essentially what I want to do is I want to take a particular rectangle of however, whatever size, take all the passes and work out the percentage in that entire rectangle. OK, so not looking at each individual pass, but in that rectangle. OK, um, and then that's what I want to color code or map within this chart. OK, so I have the raw data that's from StatsBomb where the pass happen. And the real trick to this is I have to build a grid system. OK, so this is the bit you need to uh, add on. Um, and I'm using Satswam data, so I know it's 0 to 120 long and 0 to 80 is the pitch. OK, now to create this file, each one of these squares or rectangles needs four data points. OK, and you'll see each one, as I hover here, has its own coordinates. OK, so 0 to 0, 0 to 20, 20 to 16 and so on. OK, so I've divided the pitch up into into these rectangles pretty much to match the grid system that StatsBomb have in theirs. But you could use any grid system. And the pain point before was that you had to create all this kind of manual data yourself. So if I go to what the finished product looks like, you can see, you know, it's a CSV file with four, co four columns, but each rectangle has to have four data points. OK, so it becomes quite an unruly file. And if you want to edit it or change it or whatever, it can become really cumbersome to figure out what the coordinates of each one should be. So I use ChatGPT. This was the prompt that I used. I just asked to create a CSV file with the four columns that I wanted called what I wanted to call them. I told them the total length and width of the pitch and I told them how I wanted it broken down. Within a couple of seconds, it had generated the CSV file for me. So that that's a huge time saver and also means, you know, if you've got different coding systems, different pitch dimensions, different sport, whatever it is, and you want to break it into all those areas, you can easily do so. OK, I think there's loads of use cases now where this would speed up some of those things. So I've created that file and I have the raw data. So now I need to bring these two things together and show you how to build the chart. OK, so I'm in the data source tab down here at the bottom. I've brought in my my game file. So the 2019 Champions League final. And you can see here, you know, standard event level data. Uh, it contains everything that I need and it has the X, Y coordinates. There's the location zero and location one. OK, so they're the locations of every single uh, pass. Now, just for the purpose of this video, but like I've filtered I've added a filter so it's only looking at passes. You, you don't have to do that. You can apply the filter somewhere else, but I just want to make this nice and clean for our example. OK, so there's my X, Y in my normal data set. And then I need to bring in my new CSV file that I've created. OK, so this is the kind of zone template file that I was showing you there in Notepad. You know, each zone has four corners and there's the X, Y of each corner. OK. And then it repeats for zone two and zone three and so on. OK. So I've used ChatGPT to create the zone template. I now bring it into Tableau and I need to join or, or use a relationship to join these two files together. OK. So what I want you to imagine is this you know, event here happened in 61x41y. That belongs to a particular grid, right? So that should land in a particular grid. It doesn't matter for right now what it is, um, but it, it, it should be in one of those. So what I need to do is join these two data sets so that for each coordinate, 
it will also add the zone number that it should be in. Okay, so I'm just, you know, if you work in Excel, it's a bit like a VLOOKUP, that kind of thing. To do that, I have to write out a big if statement. Um, again, really cumbersome to do. Uh, in the previous video, you'll see I, I did a couple of small zones because I'd lose my mind writing all of this out. Um, but essentially what it's, it's saying is it's just saying look at each one of those x, y coordinates. And if it meets a certain condition, put it in zone 1 or zone 2 or zone 3 all the way down to zone 30. And then that allows me to join that on to the pitch zones. So if there's a bunch of events inside these coordinates, they'll get tagged with zone 1 and that will match zone 1 in my other file. All right. Now again, I use ChatGPT for this. Okay, so I went into ChatGPT and I asked it to create. So there's my original uh, prompt to create the CSV file. It didn't quite get it right and I had to ask for something else. And then, uh, I, then I asked it for to create the if statement. Okay, so again, I didn't write out this if statement. I just said, here's an example of what I need. So I think I gave it the first line. I made sure the file names or the column names were exactly as they are in the data set. And I said, can you repeat this so that I have, you know, 30 zones, blah, blah, blah. Okay. It's a really good method to be able to create this really quickly. Okay. So that gives me a zone ID in here. I think if I scroll to the end. Okay. So it gives me a zone ID and then I just match that to the zone ID here. Now, this is really something you're going to have to kind of test yourselves to prove that it works and you understand the logic but they're the two bits so you have to generate the template file and you have to write that if statement both of which I just use ChatGPT to allow me to okay and once you've got those two parts together you just need to pull it all into a single file okay so I'm gonna create a new one and I created two additional calculations here okay now, it's quite straightforward. If you don't want the labels, you, you can skip this kind of part. But uh, I like having the labels in here, so I'm going to do this. So all I did was I created two calculated fields. Okay. Again, really simple. All I wanted was to find the midpoint of each zone. Okay. So it takes the minimum of x plus the maximum of x and divides by 2. And I do the same for the y coordinate. So... When I plot this, all it's going to give me is a kind of dot in the center. You can see that dot in the center midpoint of every one of the polygons. Okay, so mid of X, and I'll just show you this one in case you want to pause the video and have a look. Min of Y plus max of Y divided by 2. Okay, so let's pop them onto my chart. Okay, and then... I'm going to open up my pitch zone template file and I want to add, so I want to change this to a polygon. I'm going to put zone ID onto detail and I'm going to put path onto path. And you can see now I have my 120 by 80 and I'm going to just adjust the color. So I'm going to lower the transparency here. And just so you can see that it is working, I'm going to add a kind of light border here. Okay, now we can mess around with the color in a second. But you can see now I have my four squares all lined up. So a couple of housekeeping things before I forget. I do need to edit this axis and reverse it. So the way the coordinates work, 80 should be at the bottom, 0 at the top. Uh, so I'm okay with that. And then I can really, I can hide those. So get rid of the show header. So it just looks like straightforward pitch. Okay. So we've got our grid. Next, I want to color these boxes depending on the path success rate. So I need to create my path success um, calculation. Okay, so the way this works is I, I need the total number of successful passes. And again, this will depend on the data set you use and, and things like that. So the calculation might be exact if you're not copying my data. Uh, but it, the way this works is, you know, if the pass outcome is null, uh, then it's a successful pass. So I'm just summing all that. So that gives me the total successful passes. And then I'm just a count of all the event types. 
Now that works because I've filtered for only passes. Um, again, you could do a count if event type equals pass uh, would work as well. Okay, but I, I can do this because I've already filtered out uh, for passes. So that gives me my pass success and I just wanna put that onto the color. And I'm gonna play around with the colors here. So I'm gonna use orange, blue, reversed. And I think we'll just stick with that. You can change the center. So I don't know if you have particular KPIs or anything like that you wanna change. You can also, you know, increase the steps. So you can play around with the kind of settings on that, but I'll let you do that in your own time. So that's the straightforward heat map. And the thing that I wanted to do to make this stand out a little bit was just to add the labels. So there was a little bit more obvious, okay? And to do that, I need a dual axis. So essentially I can't label this. So you'll see there's no label option on the polygon. So what I'm gonna do is on my PC, hold control and drag out that mid X. So now I get two marks cards. So one is for my polygon and this one is what's gonna be my my labels, okay? So you can see in the finished one, I've made it a, a circle, okay? So let's change that second one to a circle. Um, I don't need a path. Do need the zone ID, so I've got each one. And I don't need that on the color because we're just gonna label these. So let's just drag pass percentage to label. And then I think I did a count of events. Uh, so again, that's just this one here. Okay, and again, just wanna tidy some of these up. So this should be a percentage. I'm going to label right in the center and I'm gonna reduce the dot size to non-existent and I'm gonna color so it disappears with no border. So the dot kind of disappears though because I just want these in the middle. So this is looking pretty good. And now what I'll do is come up to my second green pill here at the top, dual axis, right click and just make sure they're synchronized. And again, just untick show header. And I can go back and play around potentially with the size of this. So if I want to bump that up to maybe 14 or 12. Okay, looking pretty good. And the last thing I think I did then was just add a player. You could do a team filter, but I can also add a player filter here. So let's do a single value list. Okay, and if this happens where you start to do this and the, the pitch changes, um, what you want to do is just turn back on the show header for the two axes. Right click and edit. And you see instead of being automatic, because automatic will just shrink it to whatever's needed for that player. I want to make it fixed and so zero to what one am I on uh, the Y so that's 80 okay so it'll always show zero to 80 and I'll right click again and show header uh, edit axis and again I want to make this fixed zero to 120 perfect and again I can hide them so somebody's not seeing all of that and now as I flick around the players, the team, or the pitch doesn't change, but I get a heat map for each and every player. Okay, I hope that was useful.